All right, folks, news is moving so quickly, but this one is still relevant. So this was a piece that Politico printed uh, on Sunday morning. So it was uh, July 21st, 1030 a.m. So this was three and a half hours before Biden dropped out. Republicans could file challenges if Biden replaced Speaker Johnson says House Speaker Mike Johnson reiterated Sunday that any attempt by Democrats to sub in a new candidate in place of President Joe Biden is likely to be met by legal challenges. Speaking on ABC's This Week, Johnson said every state has its own system, and in some of these, it's not possible to simply just switch out a candidate. Johnson's assertion, which echoed remarks he made during the Republican National Convention, suggests a strategy Republicans could be looking towards should Biden decide to withdraw from the presidential election, which a few hours after this was printed, he did. I think in states where it can be contested, I expect that it will be, and they'll have an interesting battle on their hands, the Louisiana Republicans said Thursday of a possible switch. So here he was on Sunday morning on CNN saying essentially this. And Biden is facing rising calls to exit the race. Democrats are looking into potential legal hurdles to replacing their nominee uh, so late in the process. Um, do you think that whoever emerges from the Democratic Convention as that party's nominee for president and vice president, do you think those people should be on the ballot in all 50 states? Uh, or would you support efforts to sue to keep uh, those nominees off state ballots, assuming it's not President Biden and Vice President Harris? Look, I'm a former litigator, you know, a constitutional law attorney. I just made note in some uh, comments over the last week that they have real problems. I mean, every state has their own election system. That's that's our constitutional uh, system. That's the way it's done. And in some of these states, it's a real hurdle. They have a real problem of replacing the nominee at the top of the ticket. Remember, (laughs) Jake, I mean, Joe Biden was chosen after a long, small-D Democratic process by 14 million people uh, emerging through that primary. It will be very interesting to see if the so-called party of democracy, the Democrats, go into a back room somewhere and switch it out and put someone else at the top of the ticket. I mean, I I think they've got legal hurdles in some of these states, uh, and it'll be litigated, I I would expect, on the ground there, and um, they'll have to sort through that. They've got a real problem. You know, it was interesting. I I, I listened to the uh, Joe Manchin's interview, which was compelling at the opening of the show, and he made the point that this is not his father's uh, Democrat party. It's not the party he knew as a a young... Blah, blah, blah. So you get the point there. Uh, he didn't back off of that. This was an interview this morning, so that was obviously before Biden dropped out. And here he is after Biden dropped out, and after it looks like Harris uh, is essentially the presumptive nominee. The states, there are impediments to just switching someone out like that. 14 million people went through the process and chose this nominee, Joe Biden. Now a handful of people have gotten together and decided he's no longer suitable. That's not how this system works. They are violating democratic principles. And I think that's a real problem, and I think uh, there'll be a lot said about that in the days ahead. Okay. Now, because AOC put out that completely moronic Instagram Live video, I actually (laughs) did the arduous work of reading all 50 states' guidelines, you know, summarized in a nice little article, right? About a paragraph. That that, that, that has really taken one for the team, Keaton. Well, I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about in the event that we did that segment, which we didn't have to because by the time we would have, he had already dropped out and it was obsolete. But um, the states make it pretty clear that you have until after the convention deadline to replace the candidate on the state ballot. So I'm not quite sure what he's talking about. The only place this was an issue was in Ohio, and they pushed the deadline back so that it would not be an issue. Republicans would be extremely stupid to challenge her access to any of these state ballots. Extremely stupid. If you do that, you're feeding the Democrats' line that you really are looking to end democracy as we know it. You are the odds-on favorite. Betting markets have Trump at around 60% likely to win. You are running against an extraordinarily weak candidate who has never even been vetted on the national stage outside her own primary where she was vetted very little because she collapsed before she could be vetted thoroughly. You have it in the palm of your hand. You do not want to go down the road of actually trying to interfere with the democratic process by getting her taken off of state ballots. I understand the line you're trying to walk here rhetorically 
it is a good point. Hey, they're saying we're the threat to democracy. Meanwhile, they did this bloodless coup after a third right. primary in a row. Like, I get that. And that's a good point to make. It would be very stupid of them to take it further and actually challenge her ballot access in any state. That would play right into the Democrats' narrative, which is the only narrative they have. They can't run on their record. They can run on January 6th is bad. Uh, Trump uh, called veterans suckers and losers four years ago, which apparently one guy heard. We're going to take his word for it. Uh, and that's basically their whole case. So you do not want to give them a point by going and actually challenging her ballot access. That would be a huge mistake, and I think it's it's kind of stupid to be talking that way. I, I, I don't think they benefit from it. I don't know that it hurts them. Um, it's definitely not going to hurt them with the voters that are— uh, it's not going to hurt them with MAGA, obviously, uh, with Trump's core voters— um also anything with that core really voters, but focuses, with, with the swing voters with the marginal voters yeah anything that focuses attention on the fact that they literally cooed the president i don't know that that's great for them i i, I don't think it really helps them but i don't know that it hurts them i think it's kind of a wash because you can't discuss it without discussing what happened here and i don't think sure. discussing what happened here is really to their benefit no, but at the same time, do they actually want to challenge them in court to try and get right. her thrown off ballots? That's not a good look, I don't think. I think it's, it's, it, it's I think not they a, have it's enough not a good advantages look, going but in. Neither no is reason their to defense. Do that. No, the Democrats' defense is not a good look, but the Democrats' defense is, uh, look, the guy was falling apart. We had like, like, let's say it were a legitimate reason. Let's say they were placed then by. How do you how do you explain that he's still in office? This is what I'm saying. Like no, once I'm saying, you but open I'm, this up. Right. It's not great for them. Oh, the guy's falling apart, so why is he still the president? Well, that, well, but that's what I'm saying. There are ways to have that conversation without actually challenging their ballot access. Because once you challenge, challenge their ballot access, now you're taking it somewhere else. I think you can hammer them. They already are hammering Kamala on this. One of the—it wasn't a Trump ad, but it was a Super PAC ad. One of the ads said that basically— she was lying to cover up the fact that he was falling apart at the seams. Sure, sure. That's good. Yeah, like that's yeah. good. They have that. Oh, uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying they should do it. I'm just saying I think it's kind of a wash. I, I I think on the one hand, yeah, it's not a good look for them. On the other hand, it's it, any defense the Democrats mount is not a great look for them either. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I think I think if you're the Republicans, the way to win this election is to run the ball at this point inflation immigration that's it don't get into this ballot access shit and don't get into i mentioned this earlier on the show but i have to mention this now since we're going to cut this separately it's going to be very tempting for them to get into her personal history and her dating history and her fling with willie brown and montel and all that shit and that is not that would not play well to most women under any circumstance Especially in a post row world, you really don't want to go there. You really don't want to tempt normie women to flock to her when they're already flocking back to the GOP because of inflation and immigration. You really don't want to give them an opening to be like, oh, my God, in a post row world, if you're going to slut shame like this, like that would be a very disastrous mistake, too. And I already see some people on social media doing it. Laura Loomer posted this really really kind of sick fucking thing about her and talking about her uterus. I'm not going to get into detail because it's too nasty. But if you're the Republicans, the one word you'd never want to utter between now and November is uterus. You stay off the word uterus. That would be if I if I were writing their 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 campaign playbook. These are words we don't say uterus. You have to if you're the Republican Party, you have to stay very disciplined. If you are if you hammer the two issues on which you are the most popular, which are the most important to people inflation and immigration it's almost unlosable the race is almost unlosable if you stay on that you start getting into well they did a coup so maybe they're not eligible for the ballot in michigan no that's a loser the kamala you know you sucking on will that's a loser you don't want to get into that i mean it's not a loser yeah. for us it's not a loser from a, from a comedic Rumble. perspective right exactly yeah. like the people yeah. are going to make jokes i'm not saying that but like you don't want to make those you don't want to make that a theme of the campaign that does not play well with normies. You we, you got to keep the normies. We want to live in a, in an America where <laughs> yeah. women can molest interns too. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, there we go. That'd be a cause. That would be a cause. Please clap. Yeah.